My name is Richard Riedel. I'm a board certified medical oncologist. I work at the Duke Cancer Institute in Duke, uh, in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, I have expertise in soft tissue and bone sarcomas, as well as other soft tissue tumors, including TGCT. I've been on faculty for about 16 years. And TGCT is also known as tenosynovial giant cell tumor. Historically, it went by another name called PVNS or pigmented villain nodular synovitis. That latter term is now uh, antiquated and not used. But TGCT is not a cancer per se, but it is an abnormal uh, soft tissue growth that can affect the joints, most commonly the knee. There are two types, a limited type, which is treated largely with surgery alone with the vast majority of patients being cured and then a more diffuse type, which is more, uh, more uh, aggressive and involved, uh, for which surgery has become less favored in recent years due to the introduction of some novel systemic therapies. I think the diagnosis certainly can be delayed in part because there are a lot of other more common conditions that can mimic the symptoms associated with TGCT. For example, knee swelling, knee stiffness, pain might be attributed to trauma, a sports injury, maybe some arthritic changes. Uh, and it's not until uh, symptoms persist or don't respond to more conservative therapies like anti-inflammatories or physical therapy where imaging is done. And then the radiographic findings then raise concern for an alternative diagnosis, in this case, TGCT. These patients many times will present through the primary care provider. Uh, they could see a rheumatologist. They could see a sports medicine orthopedist. Um, so I think uh, uh, any of those have the ability to diagnose uh, through a biopsy. The radiographic findings can certainly uh, be highly suggestive of a TGC diagnosis, but a diagnosis really requires a biopsy, in my opinion. I think the management is in evolution. Historically, uh, these patients were treated with surgery, and at least for the diffuse type um, of TGCT, uh, the treatment course was really often resulted in multiple surgeries because of high recurrence rates or because of incomplete excisions. Um, that has changed in recent years with the introduction of some novel therapies that target really what's known as the molecular driver of the disease. Uh, something called CSF, uh, CSF1 uh, receptor. And uh, in doing so, uh, really has downplayed the role of surgery for diffuse type TGCT. And now systemic therapy, I would argue, is the preferred initial approach for these patients. Well, the first FDA approved agent was approved now about two years ago or so, uh, a therapy called Pexidartnib. That is an oral small molecule inhibitor. It targets the CSF1 receptor, which is involved in the pathogenesis of the disease. And in a phase three study called the Enliven study, Pexidartnib uh, compared to a placebo showed improved response rates, um, uh, better disease control, as well as significant improvement in symptoms. Um, so that was introduced a couple of years ago, and I think really has changed the treatment approach for these patients. Since that time, there are other therapies that are in active development and active exploration. Uh, most recently, within the last couple of months, we heard top-line data from a study called Motion, which looked at Vim, Vimseltinib, another oral small molecule inhibitor, uh, and at least on the data available publicly, response rates compared to a placebo were improved as well as a significant improvements in symptom burden as well as other objectives that were evaluated in that study. We're still waiting to see the full data, but a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of activity currently in the TGCT space. Well, I think at least historically, we did not have an FDA approved therapy. Uh, we would use off-label use of medicines like imatinib or nilotinib, which had activity against CSF1 receptor, but these newer agents are much more potent and selective. Uh, I didn't mention this, but there are also strategies looking at intra-articular uh, approaches, uh, therapeutics, as well as intravenous therapeutics. 
And so I think uh, the enthusiasm at the, is that these newer therapies um, really are more selective and highly target uh, the signals that are thought to be involved in, in the pathogenesis of the disease. What's particularly exciting about some of the newer therapies is um, potentially, although we ha again, we haven't seen the full data yet, uh, but potentially decreased hepatotoxicity than what has been seen in a pexidartan of the first FDA approved agents. Add that I think there are still some, some unanswered questions. For example, how long do you need to continue systemic therapy? Uh, can you take treatment holidays? Uh, can therapy be used for the prevention of recurrence if someone is able to undergo surgical resection? These are all unanswered questions. Um, uh, so I, I think the horizon is bright. There's a lot of uh, interest and exploration. And I suspect that the treatment a couple of years from now will be very different than it is even today. Okay, first and foremost, I think anyone who's diagnosed with TGCT, particularly the diffuse type, uh, really should be in a set, seen in a center with expertise. Uh, for the limited type TGCT, I think that can be adequately managed by an orthopedic surgeon or an orthopedic oncologist because surgery in those situations can cure the vast majority of patients. But if there is a diffuse type TGCT or recurrence after initial resection, an attempted initial resection, I think those individuals would be best served by coming to a center with expertise where there's a multidisciplinary approach and there can be an informed discussion regarding non-surgical approaches. Thank you.